and welcome to another installment of Liberty Nation Swampanomics Videocast. I'm Andrew Moran, Allen's economics correspondent. Each week, I dive into the mores of top economic news stories and fish out compelling narratives or I retrieve fallacies that have been accepted as conventional wisdom by the swamp creatures for years. This week, President Joe Biden signed a series of executive actions to advance racial equality. One of his measures reintroduces affirmatively furthering fair housing rule, try saying it 10 times fast, which installs safeguards against discriminatory housing practices. Another executive decision condemns and combats racism, xenophobia, and intolerance against minorities. Will this improve the economic conditions of black Americans, or is it just more political theater from a president who has made questionable votes and comments about a fifth of the nation's population? To help give us more insights into these efforts and to better understand the genuine need of Black Americans today, please welcome Liberty Nation's socio-political correspondent and chief banjo player, Jeff Charles. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. So before we dive into these executive orders and other issues uh, from this administration, please tell us how much the Black community lost sleep at night because Harriet Tubman was not on the $20 bill. Yeah, so with the whole Harriet Tubman thing, I mean, you know, I, I've made my own wisecracks about it. And here's the thing, I, I don't oppose it. I, I, I'd be happy if they put her on the $20 bill. I think most black people would be um, um, grateful that she would be honored in that way. But the, the notion that Joe Biden would come out and announce an agenda for everybody else except black people. I mean, he specifically named Asian Americans. He named uh, Native Americans. He talked about other types of dis discrimination and he's talked about how he's going to give uh, over 11 million illegal immigrants in this country a pathway to citizenship, but has not announced anything regarding the black community. That's that's a little ridiculous. I mean, and, and uh, a lot of black people, and I'm seeing black people who voted for Biden saying, this is just pandering nonsense. I mean, this doesn't really mean anything if you're not really going to do anything. I mean, it's 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 almost like how when after George Floyd was killed in Minneapolis by a police officer, all these cities, you know, started painting their streets, their streets with Black Lives Matter. They approved murals. All of this is symbolic, but not intended to actually do anything. So I that I think uh, I'm, I'm saying, you know, a lot of black people are still like, well, let's give him a chance. It's only been about a week. But a lot are already starting to lose some patience because he hasn't even given any kind of uh, announcement de declaring what he's his what his administration is going to do for the black community. And he hasn't denounced white supremacy for the tenth time in the last week. No, no, he hasn't. Yeah, and, and I'm 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 still waiting. I mean, I, I think Trump should still be condemning white supremacy as well. I mean, we we need our leaders to condemn white supremacy every single day. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm disappointed in that as well. <laughs> So let's dive right into these executive actions. What are your thoughts on these executive orders and will they improve the lives of, of, of everyday black Americans? No, no, they're, they're not gonna have much of an impact at all. And I think it's designed that way. Now, and before I even go into that, I, I do wanna preface this by saying that there's not a whole heck of a lot that a president can do for the black community. A lot of this stuff depends on their local governments and on their state governments. That being said, it doesn't mean that the president can't do anything and what he's put forth so far doesn't really have an impact i mean people were talking about how he's going to end contracts with private prisons well the doj the department of justice only has contracts with three private prisons and only eight percent of the entire prison population are in these private prisons so he's not putting an end to them he's just not having contracts with them and there are still i think five or six more private prisons that don't even have contracts with the department with the, with the Justice Department. So this does really nothing. And we're, we're talking about a, about 150,000 prisoners, some of those who are, who are black, and it's not even gonna impact their lives at all. And again, this is just what the Democrats do because they know that they don't have any competition. So they can put forth something that looks good and feels good, but in the end does nothing. And I would say that for the rest of the executive orders that he's issued so far as well. So in that case, what kind of policies would you like to see enacted at either at any of the three levels of government to support the black community? So, I mean, if you, if you look at if you look at the polling of black Americans in the lead up to the election, you'll see that the top priorities are economics. That's number one, especially with black men. Economics is one. They want jobs. They want entrepreneurship. They want they want to have fewer obstacles in their way as far as starting their businesses. Uh, education is up there as well. School choice, the, the vast majority of black Americans 
are about school choice, which isn't it was isn't economic on its face, but it does play into economics because the more educated people are, the better jobs they'll get, the more the more likely it is they'll be able to start successful businesses, so on and so forth. So, I mean, any policy that was that's going to help black Americans needs to focus on on economics. I mean, you know, Joe Biden did put out a document as far as a black agenda before he before he took office but we haven't heard anything about that and realistically a lot of those are government solutions they're not designed to help say the average black entrepreneur who wants to start his business or or if it's a black woman who's trying to start a you know like say, say a hair salon well she's got all these regulations that she has to deal with nobody's talking about that because the reality is that they don't really want black people to have those opportunities so you speak of regulations, uh, one of the chief accomplishments of the previous administration was slashing the federal regulatory book. Now, a lot of the things like the, the hair salons, those are community based. So do you think anything that former President Trump did benefited black black Americans? Well, overall, his policies did um, impact black Americans in a positive, positive way. I mean, we always hear about, you know, the lower unemployment. That's a huge boom to the black community. Um, it also has made it easier to start black owned businesses a lot. There were the, 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 the level of black owned businesses actually increased under Trump. And I don't know how they'll do under Biden, but the notion that Trump didn't do anything that helped the black community is 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 absurd now he may not have had specific policies specifically designed for the black community and i know that he did they did put out the the platinum plan for black america you know shortly before the election but even so his policies did help black people i'm not sure if that we're going to see any of that under, under biden over the years, I've written about how most people have only known government controlling things in society, whether it's the roads or, or even currency. If they're introduced something else, they're, they're generally taken aback. So now you've often written about Republicans failing to reach out to black voters, either at the federal, state or local level, uh, criticizing those who use the ridiculous plantation language. I won't name names who've used that. Uh, do you think a GOP message of lower taxes, fewer regulations, and smaller government would appeal to black holes, households in the inner cities, for example, who might be struggling to put food to the table? So what messaging would these voters need to be given to start voting for something other than big government politicians? I mean, if a Republican comes up to them and says, oh, we have to slash the, the budget and, and you know balance the, the books, w w would that appeal to uh, uh, black households? Yeah, I'll tell you a short story. I mean, when Trump first got elected, my cousin and I were talking about it. And my cousin doesn't like Trump. He doesn't like him at all. But when he got elected, he said, well, oh, well, hopefully he'll at least lower my taxes. If you ask the average black person, especially a black male in this country, if they would like their taxes to be lowered, you're not going to get a whole lot of them that say no. They're all going to say, I mean, pretty much all of them are going to say, yes, I want lower taxes. If you ask any black entrepreneur who's looking to start a business, if 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 they would like fewer regulations that make it harder for them they're going to say yes let's get rid of some of those regulations that are unreasonable that don't provide any benefit but keep me from earning my money they're they're, they're going to say yes to that the problem the problem isn't i mean the thing is the issue isn't necessarily conservatism the issue isn't necessarily uh the policy the issue is the way the Republican Party approaches the black community. If they actually went in with a message of, of, of black empowerment, I mean, in, in, and not be afraid to say that and say, this is how we're going to empower you to start your business or to get a better job or to, or to, or to get a better education. And they have actual solutions to that end. They would win more instead of just sitting back and pretending that they're all mentally enslaved. There was a, um... Her name escapes me now, but that uh, the black Republican candidate of Maryland, uh, she went viral over that video when she walked the streets of Baltimore uh, and she started identifying some of the problems. Is that, is, that, is that the type of campaign that Republicans or any candidate in general should start embracing? Well, I, I think it needs to be it needs to go deeper than that. I mean, there was nothing wrong with her having an ad, but I mean, if you're running in a local district, especially one that's overwhelmingly uh, a black, Putting, putting out a video is good for fundraising, but the bottom line is that you're gonna have to get down there in the trenches. You're gonna have to, to get it. And I, and I know that she did some of that, but I mean, I've, I've talked to a lot of other black candidates running for office and you have to, you, it's a, it's a full-time job. Like you've got to get down in those communities. You got to talk to people, you have to establish yourself. It's also a benefit if you actually live in the district that you want to represent. So, I mean, and, and, and the other part of it too, is that we have to realize that it's not, 
uh, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So a lot of people who are running right now might not win right now, although I think some could, but just recognizing that if you lose, that it, it shouldn't be over. Run again and run again and run again. I would even encourage them to run more for local office and then worry about the, the federal level as well. I mean, th there, there's a lot of different factors that go into this, but the, the bottom line is that it's gonna take a concerted effort over time to start making inroads. I mean, the Republican Party has to do a lot to rebuild trust with the black community because they, they squandered it decades ago. Now, if you comb through US history or any history for that matter, government has typically been the cause of a lot of the oppression imposed on black people. For example, the Davis Beacon Act prohibited black construction workers from working on public works projects. Uh, the government advanced segregated housing. But now the government seems to be going in the opposite and more extreme direction, employing things like race-based affirmative action. Is this the right step to go? Or should the government should, should just get out of the way and allow black Americans to compete in a free market system? You know, back when affirmative action was actually imposed, it, it, it might have made more sense. Nowadays, I, I just see it as a Band-Aid. Don't, don't do race-based uh, 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 hiring. Just put just get, get the obstacles out of the way to allow Black people to get to where they need to be. Get rid of a lot of the regulations. Have better education. Allow Black mothers and fathers to choose where they send their kids to school. There are a lot of other things that they can do to empower the Black community to, to the point to where they wouldn't even necessarily need affirmative action. I mean, if, you, if you're in an area where, where you feel like you're being discriminated against because you can't get hired, well, guess what? If there's tons of black owned businesses that have been able to, to, to be started and, and be successful, you can go work for one of those or vice versa or, how, or however you choose to do it. The, the problem is that, you know, we focus so much on, well, let's just have the government fix the problem that's not going to fix it because affirmative action also has its drawbacks as well. I mean, if you get hired as an affirmative action hire, you've got people giving you the side eye. You've got people looking at you sideways like you didn't really deserve to be there. So, so I think the, the, the actual solution is to create an environment where black people can thrive. And, and you mentioned how the government's discriminated against black people in the past, but they're still doing it at the local level. So we just don't hear about it. And they may not say the word, we're doing this specifically to screw black people, but they'll put it in other ways that, that hurts us. And by the way, most of this is done by Democrats because Democrats run the cities in which pre mo most black people live. Minimum wage has been uh, one of those issues that really hurt uh, black people, especially when, when the minimum wages were first introduced. They wanted to price uh, black workers out of the market and at the benefit of, um, of uh, unions and, and white workers. So I'd like to thank Jeff Charles for appearing on a special edition of Swampanomics TV. Please read my full Swampanomics column where I dive into a broad array of issues from the stock market to economics to finance. Thank you. Go deeper on the topic discussed in this video. Head on over to one of these links here or go to our Liberty Nation Roku channel. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for Liberty.